The devil will want you to stay away from church because something happens in church. It's not because people are gossiping about you. It's not because people are talking about you. The very presence, the Bible says, it says where two or three of you are gathered in my name. The key word is in my name. He says, I am there in the midst. I have called you. My name is Jesus. They will wake up thinking to themselves, I must have drank something last night that affected the way I slept. Hereafter, ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now we see this is exactly the same thing that Jacob saw. What Jesus was saying here was that I am the ladder. That Jacob's ladder is standing right in front of you. And, I mean, he puts it later on in John, John chapter 14. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says, no man cometh to the Father. Remember that ladder? You had, you had the Father on top, right on top. He says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. So he's saying, I am access to God. Jacob put that rock. Jesus also is the rock. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 18 he says upon this rock I will build my church then he says and the gates of hell shall not prevail so in, in in church there must be a connection you know this is one of the reasons why we pray when we invite people to church we don't just want them to come for our services we want them to make the connection we want them first of all to encounter God you know we want them first of all to encounter God to have a spiritual experience because until that happens, you're not a part of the church. You can be going to church, but you don't yet belong to the church. You know, that's the first thing you want to have, a, a connection. Then um, you have a conversation. Uh, in, in, a church is a family. That means you cannot be by yourself. You, you just can't be by yourself. When you become a member of the church, you come into a conversation. One, now when I use the word conversation, the synonym for that can be fellowship. A church is a place of fellowship. First, you see, our fellowship is with God, our fellowship is with Jesus, our fellowship is with the Holy Spirit. And when you come into church, you see now the Word of God will begin to do things in your life. What are the things that the Word of God can do? The Word of God will bring correction to you. Well, can you just back up? Let's read from 15. And that from a child thou had known the Holy Scriptures which is able to make thee wise. Now, when he says you have known the Holy Scriptures, children don't just know Holy Scriptures. If children know Holy Scriptures, it's because they were taught. So another way you can say this is, as from a child, thou had been taught the Holy Scriptures. You know, And this is one of the things that people don't understand. In, in our churches, the children's church is not a holding area. It's a place where children should be taught the Word of God. You know, it's not a place for them to just play. It's not a place for them to just, they should be taught the word of God. It says, from as a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Then he says, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The scriptures will make you wise. That's what he says. The scriptures will make you wise. Verse 16, he shows you a character of the word. He says, all scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable unto doctrine you know the scripture is profitable unto doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness all these go on in church they go on in church remember that this scripture was written to a pastor you know not a businessman the Word of God is for reproof if you belong to a church and you can't stand correction, you're a bastard. You are not, you're not part of the church. If you get corrected and immediately you want to leave the church, um, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Because correction is a good thing. 